the background uh, for the dig. So I remember Joe always wanted to do this small little project on his own. Yeah. And I just thought it'd be good to present it to Sony and see if actually we can get this made for this camera that's coming out. Joe and I like always testing the, you know, the latest and greatest of cameras that are coming out. We've done it in the past with the F65 and F35 and we just wanted to see what this camera can do. You know, when we first talked about figuring out a project that would showcase and test out this camera and give us a variety of conditions to torture the camera with, uh, this this idea of the dig seemed like a good one in that it, it was, you know, nighttime, daytime, urban, you know, desert. Uh, it was fun to pull it out and kind of polish it off and, and uh, get a chance to finally make it. So on this job, we elected to shoot anamorphic 4x3. The equivalent field of view in a spherical lens is twice the focal length on an anamorphic lens. The reason to go anamorphic is for the quality of that image and because it's not as sharp as spherical, you're giving up sharpness for a little bit of personality. Uh, those out of focus highlights, the way the lens breathes when you pull focus from foreground to background. We really embraced it by shooting 266 which is using the full frame anamorphic, which, you know, is, um, has only been used a few times in features. But uh, for this particular project, that ultra-wide aspect ratio uh, really suited the landscapes and the shots we were framing up. What I love about the color, it just has a little bit more, it's a little bit more soft in its kind of feeling, and there's a lot, I feel like there's a lot more uh, dynamic range than before. Uh, the highlight range is pretty outstanding. We were really pushing it with this spot, you know, a dark black car with a black interior shooting out midday desert. You're pushing the envelope of kind of what a camera can capture and yeah, just seeing uh, detail outside the windows, great shadow detail, uh, the way the camera rolls into the highlights, like shots pointing directly into the sun. We have one of those in, this, in the spot. It has tremendous range in the highlights. You know, you find that I could push it further than I've ever had before. Even in this dig right now, we're kind of in the shadow of these rock quarries and the sun goes down behind the rocks and there's still bright sky in the background. So I'm trying to hold that latitude and the detail that's down the ground and it's holding it. And it's probably a pretty amazing stop range. Getting to that image was incredibly easy. The low light detail and the highlight detail, all there in camera in a nice range between the two so that skin tones fell into a really pretty place. You know, I love the kind of, the smooth kind of latitude that it has right now. It's a different feel than before. It just feels like it's kind of not as electronic, a little bit more kind of, a little bit more homey. Uh, I can't talk for Claudio's lighting or how long it took him to light, but there's a, a natural feel for this. And I'm sure that's what his intention was, especially in the, in the interior nights. He wanted that overhead light, but there's a real soft quality in the low light flesh tones that I didn't have to push or, or pull, you know, or actually didn't have to work on it really at all. For me, you know, I kind of put a wish list of like, you know, can we get all the NDs inside the camera? Because I, I always figured it's, it's really nice to, to kind of craft the um, depth of field, not just for aesthetic reasons. You want to back off a little bit, oh, I just want to see a little bit of the background, or I just want to blur it that, just a little bit more. And it's so easy to have all the NDs built into the camera. When you're shooting in such dusty locations, it's good to have your ND filters inside because then you're not switching filters and cleaning filters all the time, and it can save a ton of time. And having a full set of NDs in a camera this size, it's nothing short of impossible. I, I still don't know how they've done it. What I was really impressed with the new camera is that they feel like they're really accurate steps, and there's no, I felt like there was no color loss even at the heaviest ND we put in there. I mean, what's a great moment for an aerial pilot is that he, we just came from the desert shooting and then he's, he's going, flying into downtown and he's going to go to a place where he probably wanted an N12 and he could just dial out all the NDs, whatever, whatever which ones you want. Now with the new Sony camera, it's clear sailing and stuff that what you guys have designed for this is pretty much a conventional size, fits in there easily, lenses fit in there. All that was was uh, like Peter adapting to a special base to it, uh, special cables to run it, and we're ready to go.
I remember when, he, when I talked to, when I was in Japan and I talked to the engineers and I wanted a camera that was really built um, solid. I said, you know, you should be able to take this to anywhere, to the desert, to cold, to hot, to, you know, be able to, te you know, deal with 110 temperatures and just be and confident in those temperatures. One of the amazing things is that how fast the camera actually um, turns on. I mean, it, you're, it's, I think it's up and going in five seconds or maybe even less. It's really quick, which is really important. You're just trying to go up and pick up a shot. You just turn on the camera, you're not waiting. Before you even look into the viewfinder, it's ready. So that's a huge bonus. It's one of the most simple Sony menu systems to date. Without having to pull out a manual, you can understand the camera just simply by pressing the menu and going through the first few steps you see, oh wow, this is very simple. There's two menu panels on, on the camera. There's one for the uh, camera side, which has the full set of menu data, and there's also one for the, the DP operator, which is a little small menu that's on his side. And that shows you all the critical information you know. So now, I mean, it's great to have a camera that you just want to select the speed. There's no like going into a different mode for the speed. You just kind of go and you want 20, 28, 20, 36, 120, 48, or whatever you want. It's just a click away. And you want to see the project played back at that speed. You just kind of click play and it plays back at the project speed. And it's very simple. I can copy one card at one gigabyte per second, which is pretty fast. So a full card can take five to 10 minutes, a five, five, 12 cards. So it's very, very, very fast. Um, and the XOCN format is uh, supported within Colorfront and DaVinci and uh, Sony's Raw Viewer. So it's a very simple format to work with. It renders pretty quickly, faster than real time. Uh, 4K media, 4K 4x3 anamorphic media. That's very, very fast actually. Having worked with the, all the generations of camera that work up to this from, you know, F23 to F35 to F65, and just seeing the improvements that happen every step along the way, you know, it was very clear from our first look at the footage that this was another kind of leap forward.